Welcome to Watercolor by Scarlet Damon. Today I am going to fill this little palette. So I have another one here and they come with tops. Now this one I'm just using as I mix colors. I use it as my little mix well. And of course um, I also have the big one which I'm sure you guys have seen many many times. That's this one which um, is wonderful and of course I have a legend to go with it because I found it thank goodness um, this one is great it's my go-to I reach for it all the time I absolutely love it it has a lid as well which doubles as as the mixing pan of course it's the right size but today I wanted to fill this one in so there's a few new colors that I recently purchased now I did not uh, these were not sent to me if uh, Schminky if you're listening by all means send me everything you want to send me that would be wonderful um, as it is I probably own two-thirds of all the schminky colors um, and these ones everything on my desk right now is what I recently picked up recently being maybe six months ago or so and they've been sitting in this box ever since I did get a few Winsor & Newton these are all Winsor & Newton here and these are schminky same goes for Windsor Newton. Please feel free to send me all the paints you want to send me and I will go through and look at them and review them and tell you how great they are and why I feel that way because it's an awesome company. So I'd like to fill this. Now, I don't want to fill the whole thing. I just want to have this as a complementary to the palettes that I already have on the table. And I think I might at a later date actually clean this one out and maybe put, you know, six in here. So I still have the six in the middle to do some mixing because it's really helpful to have a spot to do mixing that's not just in an open space like this, but where, it, it, but where the water uh, stays together. Um, and I can tell, I, I painted not too long ago um, I painted maybe an hour ago and these there's still liquid in there it's less than a, a single drop of water but because it's porcelain not plastic it dries way slower than if it was plastic which is one of the main reasons why I like using porcelain that and um, I try to avoid plastic wherever possible this is obviously not completely possible when dealing with art supplies obviously the lids are plastic Whenever I have the choice or the option to go one or the other, um, I try to choose or I prefer to choose a non-plastic option. Uh, before I purchased this, I was using a wrench, um, which is somewhere in here, but there's so many boxes of art supplies, I have no idea where exactly it is. And I was using the wrench and it was fine, but then I came across this one, I thought this is so pretty. It's so simple, it makes sense. Um, it's comfortable to hold and best it perfectly fits the lids so if I find that for some reason the lid doesn't want to come off which is probably that I have opened it and there's a little bit of paint on the end and it's kind of sealed or glued itself closed then I can get it open using this this one would be for acrylic or oil whereas the one over here is going to be for watercolor and it works so well. If you guys find that you have a ton of paint tubes um, and you have a problem getting them open, try one of these. It's just called a tube opener. And Bosner sells it. Bosner, B-O-E-S-N-E-R, is a German company. They do sell it, but um, I'm sure other companies do too. So the paints that I'm thinking about or, and I've swatched some of these out because I wasn't really sure. I went ahead and I don't, I mean, I just kind of not really swatch, swatch, but you know what I mean. I kind of put them down. Um, these two are both turquoise. This is both turquoise cobalt and turquoise cobalt. And I put the second one away now, but one, I found that very interesting. This one is Windsor & Newton and this one is Schminky. So I know that on this palette, I already have my turquoise, cobalt turquoise, um, this one from Schminky. So in this little palette, I wanted to include the cobalt turquoise from Windsor Newton because it really is incredibly different as colors go. I have so many colors in so many palettes and I actually just lent one of my really large palettes. You've probably seen that in a few of my videos, my really, really big one. I lent it to a girlfriend and now that it's gone, I kind of regret doing that because 
it had all my reds in there and I didn't want to go ahead and re-swatch out all my reds to figure out what I might want to put in here. So I'm thinking I'm going to go with Alizarin Crimson, which is this. This is a good cherry kind of uh, a cherry slash Santa Claus color. And it is transparent. It is pigment PR206 and the tube number is 466. And this is a Winsor and Newton uh, Alizarin and Crimson. We're just going to gently open it. And using a clean brush, Oh, that's beautiful. That is beautiful. That looks a lot like cobalt turquoise. You guys see that? So like this one, but darker. It's really pretty. Now if we put a little more on, let's see how dark we can get it. Yeah, that's beautiful. Okay, and on the other side, we just add some water. I think that's about as light as it's gonna go. Although this one has a great range too. Let's go back and check this one out again. I think I'm being a little unfair at the moment. All right, so my personal conclusion here would be this color on the right is gorgeous and I would probably use it um, for shadows, for clothing, for, mm, for illustrations, whereas this one would be great for sky, um, for water or something like that, more natural, because this is, although this is more like um, a tropical water, isn't it? So I think I'm gonna go with this one because I already have these over there. So we're gonna add that to a palette later. Okay, so that means this one goes back in the big box, or the little box actually, because it's new and it isn't anywhere. And then we have these ones. So we still have one too many here. New Gamboge, Golden Brown. New Gamboge, should I do that one? No, let's do New Gamboge as well. Oh, that's very red. Um, there it is, my little mixing brushes. I love getting these tiny mixing brushes because they're really good because they're so short, you're not gonna paint with them. So it's easy to, uh, to find them. And mm, that's very pretty. That is very much like this one, although that one's dry, so it's not really a true comparison. But let's say if we come over here and lift some of this, of course it's dry and so it will look different because it won't be as thick as I really work it. Okay, so I would say, wow, the new Gamboge and the Quinacridone Gold are almost exactly the same. This one has a darker, uh, darker dark to it, and this one's a little more like a sepia brown kind of thing going on there, or like a yellow ochre, Indian yellow kind of tone, like it's, it's softer, whereas this is more into the brown. So, I have that already, so I will not use this. So that simplified that option. So we won't put uh, new gamboge here. Today. Okay, so that brings us down to four. So we have um, did I do Indian red? No oh boy. No. Ooh, oh 
that's nice. That is nice. Look at the spread on that too. Let's see if we can get a little thicker. That is a really good brown. It's like a clay brown. I like that a lot. You guys tell that I'm starting to catch a cold here. I'm doing a lot of coughing. Okay, so then we have these four. So based on these colors, I think this one should probably go up here. But that won't work because we'll have three, four down here. So we have our Phileo turquoise and our cobalt turquoise. And they are no, nowhere else. So I'm going to leave out the cobalt turquoise as well, just to simplify the palette. And then using our reds, gray, and a red, maybe. And then these are. How do I just end up with an extra one? And what was the last one? I said these two. One should go. So let's take out Naples yellow because this one and this one are exactly the same color in the end. This is how it looks right now. So we're down to three. Yeah, well, it doesn't look like there's a lot of yellows here. There actually is. Um, the This one turns yellow. This one turns yellow. This one has a very blue tone to it. This one's also obviously blue, and this one's red. So we are covering everything. So I want to paint, put them on like this, in this direction. And I'm just going to swatch them out. Now, how I do it, it's really not that complicated. Um, I just want to put it in and kind of... Squish it up to the corner. It doesn't have to be down on the bottom. This way the paint's up on the edge and the water will stay at the bottom and the paint will theoretically stay a little cleaner. So blue. And then the golden brown. Now it's important that I leave them like this so I can write down what they're going to be later. And then here, let's do a lizard and crimson. Now, if this happens, if you get a lot of gum arabic, don't worry about it. Your paint will be fine. Right. You can try to use an eyedropper to suck it back out if you want to and then stick it back in here, but it's really not super important. You can dump the whole thing into a large pan and then mix it all back together. Okay, that was natural gray. And the last one is Indian red. So this is gonna be a really wild kind of earthy palette, which is good because those are my favorites. And if the paint is too high and you wanna get back in, just give it a little squish on the edges so where it's squished in, Pinch it in the opposite spot really gently, and the paint should fall back in to your little paint tube. So there we go, that's my new palette. So later I will take some time in a different tutorial, um, I will take some time and I will make a chart to see all the different ranges of colors that I can get using just these colors. But if you guys are looking for six fun, neat, new color ideas that you want to use to make your own palette, I highly recommend these colors. This is really good. We've got our blues, our yellows, our reds, uh, two variations of brown or brown and an orange, and a darker 
what you could consider a black or gray or even a bluish gray. It's a beautiful color. So I look forward to working with this and I'm sure you guys will see this a lot in the future because having a small palette that sits right next to my work is so much nicer than using the large palette. I still do use the large palette. It's still there. I need it for everything else, but it's nice to have something really small and convenient. And until they dry, I'm going to take the lid and I'm going to put that on top so that nothing falls in there. No dust. Keep the dust out. And then later I might also think about what I'm going to do with this little palette, but it is really useful as an actual mixing palette. So who knows? Thanks for watching. I'm Scarlett and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Toodaloo!